So ace queen here, you know, we just raised with five seven suited, and now we're raising with ace queen off. Same position, same size. You guys get the get the picture. All right, so we get cold called, and this guy now from the big blind three bets. So he from the big blind three bets seventeen percent of the time. So this is indicative of a decent player. His stats also look really strong at fifteen percent VPIP, thirteen percent uh, PFR. Yeah, um, three point three regression factor, and he knows the principle of three betting. Uh, in the big blind, so we're he's a bit small stack, but he goes ahead and, and bets that to 13 anyways, knowing that that's a, a really good spot to make such a, a three bet. You're gonna make a lot of money having the the stealer then fold uh, and the cold caller, the small blind then fold behind. So what this guy's doing here in the big blind is a so-called three bet squeeze against the stealer and the cold caller in the small blind. So. We raise it up to three and a half, very standard from the cutoff. One cold caller and he squeezes us. That's a very typical squeeze scenario in a steel situation. So he raised it up to 13, uh, very strong. Again, uh, three times the big blind here is going to put us at uh, just over 10, right? And he goes ahead and makes that really textbook play. The only thing is, it is one third of his stack, as you guys see here. And given that, Given that size, he could even opt for a push right now. And uh, of course, I'm not calling a push from the ace queen. Um, behind every pair, behind every ace king, uh, not often at least, I'm going to call that. Um, so he just makes it 13, and he's going to probably take that down a lot just making it 13. So you can also uh, opt being that small stack for a uh, push all in. Because, yeah, on basically any flop, you're going to be basically one to one stack to pot ratio. Yeah, as is the case here. So right here, his best move after having bet that 13 is to push directly. And the one opponent who's going to have missed this low flop a lot. So when he pushes here, I fold everything. I'm, OK, I don't fold everything, but um, I'm going to fold a hell of a lot. And with his 13 big blind uh, steal move from the, from, the, uh, from the big blind position, this should be his idea. Right, that once the flop comes, he knows that the the pot is the same size or bigger than his stack, so he's pushing every, any two here, right, regardless of the flop, and that's the idea. Um, but he does something really wild and checks, and so we take the initiative and bet 16. So if he comes over the top, we'll probably end up having to call it. I should have made this a bit smaller so that I could get out of the way if he does if he does go ahead and and come over the top, or I should just push myself. So these are all different lines that you can, yeah, you can play in this situation. So he checks it. We bet out half pot, a little over, and he miraculously lets it go. All right. So that was a mistake on his part. Yeah, very generally seen. You know, if you're going to make that three bet from the uh, the big blind as a steal, that small stack, be prepared to push into every flop that has uh, where the pot is basically bigger or equal to or close to equal to your stack size. That's the idea with that. This guy's stealing into us. We've got king queen suited. And we just cold call to see the flop. And we're playing NL50, so I'm deep stacked. And he's really big stacked here at 110 big blinds. Flop comes, and we flop the open ended nut straight draw. Yeah, okay, with the back backdoor flush draw. Four bucks in the pot, so eight big blinds. And we check it to him. Check it to the better, and he bets half pot. Okay, very standard C bet, relatively connected but non suited board, and we just call. Okay, so we're getting three to one on that, and need 25%. Our draw is a bit less than that, but um, you know, if the nine hits, then we're likely going to get paid off a couple more times, so we go ahead and call that for the implied odds, and miss. Okay, but now we do have our flush draw to, to boot. So we've got a total of eight outs for the straight. So nine, ten jack, queen, king. Okay, and then uh, so four outs for the for the nines, four outs for the aces. And two of those eight outs total for the straight draw are, of course, spades. So we're going to reduce that. We've got a total now of 15, 15 outs. And although we're drawn to the second nut flush with the king, they're still very strong. So I'm going to go ahead and count actually all 15 of those outs. 
and help my king might even be good um yeah, or the queen, say, if it if it were to hit just a bear king or queen, which would, if you think both of these cards are both live, if he's on, let's say, a small uh, pair, um, then you've got even 21 outs. So that's it's a really, really strong draw, depending on what he's holding. Um, I would say 15, more or less, clean nut outs at this point, giving you at least 30% plus equity just on your draw alone. And so, yeah, very strong drawing hand, and I believe we'd probably donk into him on the, yeah. So now we bet half pot into him. And we're happy to take that down as a semi-bluff. This is a semi-bluff. We have a lot of outs, but we don't have a made hand. So we bet into his, uh, bet into this pot at half. And you could even make that two-thirds to increase your fold equity. You can even make it a full pot size at this point, um, just to take it down with such a strong draw. So we bet it, and he, what does he do? He min-raises it. So that's a bit scary. Um, that's leading me to believe that he's on a set, a flop set of some kind. Um, or two pair, and so I don't want to go re-raising here when we're both so big stacked, um, because if he does have a set and then pushes over the top, that's going to be difficult for us. I mean, even even if we count all 21 outs, um, yeah, good. So what are we getting here odds-wise? Yeah, um, five to one. So I'll just look at this here: one, two, three, four, five to my call, which is five to one. So one time in six, I need a hit which is precisely the odds that I need just for the straight alone. But I've got much more than that, of course. I've got, I mean, nut, nut outs that I would count if I don't put him on the ace of spades over here. Yeah, again, 15 outs, so 30%, and I'm way above the pot odds that I need for that. And so I just call it flat. And lo and behold, the 10 hits. And again, like I was telling you guys, backdoor flush is much more deceptive then a two-suited flop that then completes on either the turn or the river. So when that 10 hits, um, the only problem is if he, if he puts me on a 10, he's going to believe it um, and not call. So, I mean, a much better card for us would have been something like the, whatever, six, six of spades or seven of spades or something like that. Um, and even better, I mean, best case scenario would have been just a blank nine, say. Uh, it's nine out of hearts, whatever. But he's not going to necessarily put us on this hand at that point. Um, the fact that the board paired, um, if he did flop a set of twos or a set of jacks, means that when I make that bet, he's going to come over the top. And if he does come over the top very often, he will have completed his full house there. Yeah, ten hits, and he unfortunately didn't pay us off. So here's a six-max example with... Um, Two's here in the big blind. Actually, it's not showing, but that's what I just posted. Here's a button. Steel raise from the cutoff, and we call it cold with twos for set value and flop it. Again, on a non-connected, non-suited board, and we're happy about this bottom set. Even middle set's often better. Um, just that decreases the likelihood of, a, of an overset. But um, the king on board here is a good thing when he raises like that. He's going to have uh, hit that relatively often. And we've got the set. So if he does have, let's say, Ace King, we've got him totally dominated at 95% equity on our side. So we check out of position and only call. This is pot building, say. It's the check call line when you flop your set. Uh, you can also opt for a check raise, if it's possible. Uh, increase your check raise stats. Um, increase the pot. We're both here relatively deep at NL50, uh, 6 max. I opt for the slow play, and this guy is relatively aggressive at 2.7 aggression factor. And he's, as you see here, I mean, he's he's betting, uh, he's see betting 56% of the time, and uh, forgive me, he's see betting 75% of the time, and he's going to go ahead and follow up on that a good third of the time on the turn. So again, I check one more time out of position, and he hauls off again on a on a second barrel, so-called second barrel c-bet. And again, he may well have the king. Okay, It doesn't have to be a bluff, but he fires a second barrel, and I once again only... Ah, okay, here I min-raise. This pretty much gives away my hand. Looking at this right now, uh, min-raise, after having check called the flop, is very often going to be a set of sixes or twos, and or the king here, now that the king's on board. So, I mean, if I'm going to raise it, I might as well pop it to 15 or something and kind of represent the king as if uh, as if I had it and maybe do that often when I yeah when I don't have that uh, anyways I could have just called that 
right, and then checked it again and hoped that he would haul off one more time. But luckily for us, we make that min raise, and he does call it. So it worked out. Um, now here on the river, I could have checked it once again, but after he kind of bet that two-thirds pot and then only called the min raise, it's highly likely he's going to be checking behind. If he has a king, I'm hoping he's going to raise me up, and that's exactly what I was hoping for after all this. But again, you know, check call the flop, check min raise the turn is often indicative of a flop set. So this is pretty much an open book for any heads-up player, uh, the way I play this hand. But um, anyway, so here I bet, you know, a little over two-thirds pot, hoping that he'll he'll pay me off. And as long as I'm making this bet on and playing that exact same line, um, with air, with my bluffs, um, with other kinds of hands, then it's decent. Um, otherwise, again, it was a bit too obvious, and he lets it go. Um, here, I could also, you know, make a small bet, act as if I'm uh, making a block bet of some kind, right? Uh, I could make maybe just maybe a ten dollar bet here, or, um, you know, one third pot size, a little over, and hoping that that he understands what a block bet is, and then comes over the top, and then I can re-raise all in. So there's different options here again. Uh, flop set, slow playing it on a non-suited, non-connected board.